right at 73, oh worship the king. I invite you to stand and we're going to sing. And let's sing loudly.
Daniel Hickory, Saturday, March 13th, and Dan Chicken, March 13th. Does anybody else have a birthday this week? <clears throat> okay. This week's anniversaries? None, but I do want to make mention today's my son-in-law's 40th birthday. All right. Joy's homes being repaired from the storm and those recovering from illnesses and accidents. Uh, it's time to order Easter lilies and get your plastic eggs for the Easter bunny and candy to me. Um, I talked with uh, Cindy this week and today, and she said Linda might come to town later on, but then they're going to head back. And uh, Rachie said that she wasn't going to be here today because she went to a big, long wedding last night. All right. Uh, we need prayers for Rhonda Exley's family, Joan Hollis's family, Bob Ruder's family, Rhonda's daughter and grandson, Gary Erskine, Sheila's, Sheila and Charlotte's cousin, Kathy Williams, Tammy DeLaGarza's mom, Audie's uh, brother who was buried yesterday, but his son-in-law also has died, and uh, Lisa's steps great grandson Seth. Okay, these are a few notes that I've taken during the week. Bob Parker was buried yesterday, that's Audie's brother. Gladys Grimes was buried Friday. Sherry Donahoe, Chance, was buried yesterday. Amy Smith, down here at the pharmacy, her dad was buried last week. And uh, then of course, Ross Glenwell Winkle, who is uh, Bobby Reed's husband, Charles Curry, also died. And I want you to keep all those people in your prayers. And it's a lot. Um, Sarah said she, had, she might have to take a few more treatments, but she's doing a lot better. And uh, as uh, Mary, I want to say Mary Williams was here last week. She was watching her granddaughter on her 21st birthday get married in Galveston. That's, do what? It was beautiful. I'm glad. I was down there this week, too. <laughs> Kim Tesh's dad that goes to our church. Okay. Uh, my husband and Miss Bruner said, oh, it's so nice to see that laughter has turned back here. So I'm happy about that. Um, I've mentioned the Easter lilies and I've mentioned um, the Easter egg hunt. Uh, we also need to pray for the church family not attending in person. Those in care facilities, Bill, uh, Bill Jones, Mary Collier, and Linda List. Those in colleges, and uh, the military, Sam, Michaela, Madison, Emma, Molly, Ethan, and Tristan, my Tristan. And those who have lost members or friends this last week. I don't know when Charles Curry's funeral is, and I don't know when... Ross Glenwinkle's funeral is yet, but they've already, uh, Sandy Pachowska called me yesterday because um, Audi wants everybody to know she feels the prayers and everything, but um, they haven't decided where they're going to have the service, what it's going to entail, and also, also <coughs> there's people suffering from COVID, cancer, and other illnesses, this church, country, state, and our nation, and the Gulf Coast residents still recovering from storms. <laughs> I have a plus to add. I spent four days in Galveston with the SCCLA. Our kids did wonderful. So that's a good thing. Uh, anybody else have a good thing to say? Yes, ma'am. I had the end of year reports, the contribution reports. So if you'll be seeing me after the church service, that's what I'm going to be saying. Thank you, Terry. Anybody else? Oh, I was told this week that uh, a lot of these colleges are not going through spring break this week and next week. They have one day of spring break because um, they said we got to get cracking. So maybe we won't have so many problems. 
was on the pages to guys. Yes, sir? We're just thankful that all went well last Saturday, week ago Saturday, and Emma made it through getting out of Boston for some good shit. He had eye surgery. <laughs> so, yay. I'm proud. Was there ever any doubt in your mind? Don't answer that. Anybody else? One more week till spring break. Bob? scheduled our admin council meeting for the 21st of March, so that'll be in uh, two weeks. Also, uh, we've got our UM Army dates. We're, we're, we're planning to go to UM Army this summer. The dates are July 11th through the 17th, and so begin just praying for that. Begin, uh, if you know of anybody that might be able to go, uh, high schooler, college student, adult, we are working on getting our information on that all put together. We're going to be going uh, to Orange, um, and uh, the hope or the plan, if we get to Orange, is to take care of some of these folks that are still putting their lives back together after the hurricane, or hurricanes that have got, that gone through there. So, you and Marty, uh, just start thinking about that. And also, we need a lot of men. For helpers. What's the date again in July? July 11 through 17. And we're going to Orange, Texas. Orange, Texas, and I was asked already why we chose the hottest, and I, I thought the best the best answer I've given is because we like it when it's hot. But uh, the real the, the real answer is that's when our adults can go, and our kids also have conflicts in June, so that's the best that, that, that seems to be the best time. Let's bow for prayer. Lord God, as we come to you in prayer, our prayer is that you would be with us, that we would sense, that we would know that you are present. We pray, Lord God, come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord God, often we just get so busy, we, we cease to recognize you and your presence and the work that you do around and among us. Help us, God, to be mindful that you're there, that there's absolutely no circumstance that we cannot get through with you before, beside, and around us. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's join now in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? 
Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. <coughs> the Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's stand now and join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So maybe maybe you've heard of these uh, these 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 uh, rooms where you can go with your family, with a group of friends. Maybe a lot of people do this from work. They go and it's called an escape room. And for a good fee, this group gets locked in a room for an hour and they have to figure out how to get out of the room. And they're given a few clues and, and they, they basically, in the room, if you can follow the clues, eventually you can get to whatever it is you need so that you can get out of the room. It's called escape room. They've got one of these over in uh, College Station on Harvey Road. It's called uh, Escape Room BCS. Uh, they open at 2. You know, if you need to go over there and check that out. But, but you know what, what happens is, is, you know, the group gets in there and, you know, they have to be folks that aren't claustrophobic. They have to be folks that have a little bit of patience. They have to, they have to kind of work together to, uh, to figure out how they're going to get out. And uh, one of the things that winds up happening is... You know, they, 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 it's, meant, it's meant to kind of be a trust thing. So they have to learn to trust one another to try to get out. Now, I suspect the children of Israel felt like that they were trapped in a place where they couldn't get out as they had Pharaoh's army charging at them from one side, and they were backed all the way up against the Red Sea. And uh, they had uh, they left slavery in Egypt, but they weren't. most of them didn't seem to be all that happy with where they were. Um, but, but God... We've been, we've been working through in land, we're working through a series called Wilderness, and we've been looking at Moses, and how Moses was raised up by God to deliver the children of Israel from slavery out of Egypt and to, and to, and to head towards head towards the, uh, the promised land. The, uh, we, we talked about how, uh, last week we were talking about how he had ended up in Midian because he had committed murder and uh, he was afraid he would he would get get tried for that, and so he left the Midian. He, he's in Midian. But last week we talked about how how he encountered God in a burning bush, and how how in that bush and in that encounter, God called Moses to go back to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, and and, and God and Moses worked that out. Moses does go back. Now, if you remember that encounter, we we read that that it is God is calling him out of the bush. Um, God says to Moses, I am who I am, when Moses asks for God's name. And then God says, I am, tell them, I am has sent you. Now, when you when you look at the Hebrew letters that, that we, we translate as I am, what we find there are the letters that, that we take the Hebrew alphabet, we put it in, uh, in Latin letters, English, and that's where we get the name, the proper name for God, either uh, Jehovah or, or Yahweh. And, 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 and the proper name for God starts with the Hebrew letter Yod, and it's kind of an oversized apostrophe, um, really, really kind of big. It, 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 it's up at the top of the line, but it's like an apostrophe. And when we when we transliterate that, it either comes across as a J or a Y. And so it's in the Hebrew, it's the same, but but, some, but we have Yahweh, we have Jehovah, and uh, there is that. We've talked about how God calls everyone. You know, we're looking specifically at God calling Moses, but, but God, I believe, calls every one of us. Me, you, everybody. There's something that God wants us to do. And you know, sometimes we don't maybe get that call or feel that call. And so sometimes what, what I do is if I'm not quite sure exactly what the call is, you know, today or this month or even this year, I look around to find someone that God's working through, and then I just try to stand as close to them as I possibly can and help them. You know, and maybe by being with someone that, that's in tune with God, I can some of that will rub off on me. I don't know, but I've done that. I've done that in many uh, in many situations. So, so uh, we're going to jump ahead a little bit. We were in chapter three last week. We're in chapter fourteen this week, and we're we're kind of glossing over all of the encounters that, that Moses had with Pharaoh. And in those encounters, Moses would say, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh would say, maybe, or whatever. And then Moses, then God would send a plague. And so we have a lot of plagues that came. The water turns to blood. We have a plague of frogs, a plague of gnats, a plague of flies. We have livestock that are killed. We have boils. We have thunder and hail. We have locusts. We have darkness. And then the very last plague is the plague that is the death of the firstborn. 
And this is the plague that finally convinces Pharaoh that he should let God's children go free from slavery. If you, if you remember the plague, basically the angel of death is going to come over Pharaoh, over Egypt at a specific time. And, and those that have taken the precautions of sacrificing a lamb and taking the lamb's blood and, and painting that on the doorpost, the angel will see that, the angel will just go right by. Or, or, the, or it would just pass over and go on to the next house and check. And, and this is where the celebration, the Jewish celebration of Passover, that's where it comes from this. And, and if, you, if you want to know the faith story for the Jewish people, the faith story for the Jewish people is wrapped up in Passover. Jewish folks celebrate Passover every year just like we celebrate Easter. That's our faith story. Our faith story is the followers of Christ and it is his Easter and the resurrection of Jesus. And, and, and within our story is Passover. Because at the Last Supper, Jesus celebrates Passover with his disciples. That's where, that's where Holy Communion comes from. So Passover is included in our story. But our story, the faith story for those who follow Christ, is the resurrection. Jesus is crucified three days later. He rises from rises from the dead. Now, you know, the children of Israel, they are not thankful. You know, um, I, was, I, was, I was happy that we had to call the worship today. We thank you, O oh Lord. And I hope it will bear in mind that often we find ourselves in places we don't want to be. We have circumstances in our life that we don't want to have. But our response, I think regardless of what's going on, is to, as best we can, be thankful to God. Now, uh, children's Sunday school class was covering the story of the, the children of Israel leaving Egypt and going to the Red Sea. And, and uh, so at, at, the, at the table, uh, after, after church, the family was talking and they asked their son, tell us what you learned in Sunday school. And their son says, boy, this was exciting. You see, we learned about Moses and how Moses started this resistance group and he planned really carefully and they broke loose from the slave masters in Egypt. They took every kind of vehicle they could find, jeeps, half traps, 16 wheelers, everything. But Pharaoh didn't quit. He came after them and finally he tracked them down with color radar. They exploded missiles all around them to try to stop them and eventually the people were at the Red Sea and they were trapped. And just when the children of Israel thought all was lost, the Corps of Engineers showed up and built a pontoon bridge across the Red Sea. And all of God's people crossed that bridge, got to the other side. When Pharaoh's army was on the bridge, halfway across, they blew it up with dynamite. And they all lived happily ever after in the Promised Land. Well, the parents asked the inevitable question, is this really what they taught you in Sunday school today? <laughs> and the boy said, well, no, not exactly. But if I told you what they told me, you would never believe it. <laughs> you see, in Egypt, Pharaoh is God. And in fact, all of the plagues, in some way, were, were attacks on the divinity of Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh was supposed to be in charge of all of that, and Pharaoh was unable to control everything that happened in the plagues. And these plagues chipped away at Pharaoh's credibility and his claim to be God. Now here's the thing, God continually does what God can to remind all of us that God is God, I think God delights in putting us in places where we can't get out of unless God shows up. You know, whether it's an illness, whether it's something, I mean, where anytime we get to a place in our life where things aren't going the way we want them to go, maybe it's a death, maybe it's a relationship, maybe, who knows, a job, something. And we get to this place where we kind of feel like we've got Pharaoh's army on one side, we've got the Red Sea on the other side, and God has a way of showing up and seeing us through that. God delights in being able to do that. God delights in putting us in a place where God is the only one 
who can take the credit. Because there's no way we can take the credit. There's no way the children of Israel can take the credit for how they got across to the other side. Pontoon bridges or not. You see, I've I, I looked at the calls in the, you know, where, where God calls people in the Bible, and it seems to me there's four things that tend to happen. And, and, and even in my life, as I feel God lead me and call me to things, I can, I can usually identify these four things. The first thing is the call. God, God lets me know, God lets the people in the Bible know, here's what I want you to do. And then usually shortly following that, there's an offering that is given. Maybe, maybe they give something up. Maybe it is an actual sacrifice. Often it's just a, a circumstance that puts the person in a place where they wouldn't be. You think about Moses. Moses is living with his family. He's there in, uh, in Midian. Things are going pretty well. I, I, would, I would add to Moses' offering. One of them is he gives all that up to go back to Egypt and deal with Pharaoh. And he doesn't know if he gets there if he's going to have this little murder thing to deal with or not. You think about the disciples. The disciples, after Jesus calls them, they leave their families and homes. And, and we're not sure if they ever get back to them. All right, the third thing. So you get the call. You have the offering, whatever it is. Then the third thing is there is a place in time where the impossible is faced. And there's, there's this suspension of reality. You know, if you think about the, the children of Israel... The Red Sea opening up and then being able to cross. It's, it's a miracle. But you think about other things. You think about Jonah living three days in a fish. That, that's kind of the offering and the suspension of reality. I think all in the same one. You think about Jesus feeding the 5,000. The call is Jesus to his disciples saying, okay, how are, how are you going to feed all these people? Well, the disciples didn't have an offering, but they found a small boy with his lunch, and he had one. He gave up his, his lunch. The fish and the bread, and, and then there's the offering. And then the impossible happens. All 5,000 eat with, with baskets left over. And then the fourth thing that happens is there is a obvious work of God that takes place. With no, often with no explanation. Those are the four things that you find often in, in the call. We, we read that, that as the children of Israel are leaving Egypt and heading into the wilderness, we read in chapter 13 that God led the people by a roundabout way. We know that there's a pillar of cloud a day, a pillar of fire by night. And the people are immediately following that, and they travel day and night and until they get to the place where they are, right there with the Red Sea on one side and Pharaoh's army on the other side. And they complain and complain. It's like, why couldn't we just stay in Egypt and die there? Why do we have to die out here? But what God asks of them, what God asks of us, is that we be obedient to whatever it is that God wants us to do. We have to choose to obey. We have to, to, to embody as best we can one of my favorite verses, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And Moses at the time says to the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm. See the deliverance. The Lord will accomplish for you today. The Egyptians who you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only have to keep still. We have to obey God. We need to trust God. And so, so we want to discover what it is that God wants us to do. We need to remember and reflect that God calls everyone. All of us have something that God wants us to do. And a big part of what we're doing, when we're not sure what that is, is trying to figure that out. And we can do that by reading the scriptures. We can do that by time in prayer. We can do that by, by being with other believers and, and asking for their help. Because, because if we can get with other believers, they can tell us, well, well, I think you're gifted here. Maybe this is what God wants you to do. That's what God wants you to do. 
three things we can do. I think that's going to be one of the big values of our covenant groups as we move forward. Is this will be a, a, a space where we can be with, 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 with six or eight of, of, our, of our fellow believers and we can sound off. You know, I think God may be asking me to do this or that or the other. And then we can ask the folks who are in the group, how does, what, what is that, how does that sound to you? Does that seem to fit for, for me? And then we choose to obey when God does give us the call, when God does help us to understand whether it's something the Bible tells us to do, whether it's something we just feel led by God to do, then, then, then it's, it's up to us to choose to obey. You see, just like the children of Israel, they're at the Red Sea, and they see Pharaoh's army, and they say, Lynn, what if we went back and were slaves again? We'd be so much better off if we were slaves. Now they forget that they were crying and crying and crying probably for, for year after year, maybe decade after decade, and they, they get out, and they see where they go back. You see, that's our tendency too. Our tendency is to go back to slavery. Our tendency is to go back to sin. Our tendency is to to, to kind of forget that God is close, that God loves us, that God has plans for us, that God has things God wants us to do. We, we, we lose track of that pretty quick. We think, well, what if our tendency is to go back? Where God wants us to go forward. God is going to go forward with us. You see, our, our, our task is to choose to walk with God through whatever the impossible is in our life today. When we face the impossible, we can choose to go back, or we can choose to join God in the journey through whatever's coming, whether we, whether we can sense it or not. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that, that you want to be in a relationship with us, that that's why you sent Jesus. That's why Jesus died on a cross and arose, so that we can be in a relationship with you. Help us, God, to be attentive to you. Help us, God, to listen for your call and to trust you with all of our heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going we're gonna to receive Holy Communion this morning. We're about to start the liturgy. If you want to follow along, it's on page 12 in the hymnal. Uh, our, our table is open. It's not necessary for you to be a member of our church. It's not necessary to, that you be United Methodist. If you're here today, you are welcome to receive Holy Communion with us today. Uh, page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the name. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world. The body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let's join now in the uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite those who are helping me to serve to come forward. <coughs> We're going to distribute the elements, and uh, they'll, they'll come out in plastic uh, bowls. And uh, don't worry if there's there, if you wind up with extras, just leave everything on the pew, including what's left, and then I'll, we'll get that all picked up after the service. We're going to distribute the elements now.
We'll lift that seal that's, that's covering the wafer. The body of Christ in the food. We'll lift the seal that's covering the juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. We left the elements on the rail, and you are welcome to take elements to someone that you know of who can't be here that would that would enjoy to receive Holy Communion. We're going to leave those there for you. If for some reason these are all picked up, there are more up on the table, and you're welcome to get those as well. We're going to continue uh, with the prayer after receiving. It's on. It is on uh, page eleven in the hymnal. Let's pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we uh, receive our offering, we have plates here at the front. We also have a plate at the back, a plate here in the office area. Uh, for our offerings and the baskets up front, those are for our rail offering. And the rail offering for the month of March is going to be for uh, the uh, the freeze and the recovery from the ice storms that we had. And those will go down to uh, to Houston and and it will be used uh, through the through the through the conference or through the Uncor for folks that are that have damage from these ice storms. We're going to collect for that. And so if you can leave an offering for the the. The winter storm recoveries, I think what it's called. That's what our we'll be doing that all, all month there with our rail with our rail offering. If if uh, you can bring an offering by the office, that'd be great. Otherwise, you're welcome to mail an offering to the church. Post office box 267, Norman G 77871. I invite you now to stand and let's join together in our doxology. Praise God for
Amen.